Well, a new inquest into the death of anti-apartheid activist Neil Agard is expected to start today at the High Court in Johannesburg. He died in police custody back in 1982, this after being detained for 70 days without trial. Well, his family has never believed the police claim that he committed suicide. They say there was foul play and want to overturn the findings. Ian says William Volko is following that story for us and joins us now live from the High Court. Mr. Vievir, good afternoon to you. Let's perhaps uh, go back to what happened in court today. We understand the investigative officer, that's Frank Khamanyan, had taken to the stand to sort of elaborate some administrative details, amongst other things. Indeed, uh, he was uh, the first witness uh, to be called. Um, um, and uh, among the things, of course, uh, he did say or he actually, um, you know, shared with uh, the court a bit of uh, disturbing news, and uh, that is with regard to the fact that uh, some of the people who may have had uh, some cases uh, or cases to answer uh, ha uh, are deceased, but also some of the records. Um, have, they have been unable as the investigating team to get hold of uh, those uh, records. But uh, that said, uh, the uh, National Prosecuting Authority's uh, legal representative as well as the family uh, legal representatives are both confident that um, uh, these proceedings will in fact uh, yield something and they will shed light into the circumstances that surrounded the death of Nil Agat back in 1982. And I mean, just talking about, you know, the family's also intention to get to the bottom of the truth. So they do not believe at all that there was uh, uh, perhaps a, a, a suicide case with regards to Neil Agat. They believe there was foul play uh, from the stance of the police side. Indeed, and uh, that's exactly what's precisely why they had to petition the Minister of Justice, and that is why you are having uh, this inquest as uh, we speak. And they are indeed confident that uh, it will go, these proceedings will go some way towards shedding uh, some light and, of course, uh, bringing closure. And, of course, those who have not, in fact, uh, the legal representative, the family's legal representative, uh, did uh, send a message to those police officers who may be hiding and who are not prepared to come forward to do so because there will no longer be a place to hide. They have asked uh, them to actually come forward because all the family really wants is closure and they want the truth to actually come out. But as I said, disturbing news that uh, some files may be missing. Uh, the police don't seem to be as forthcoming with the files of certain police officers who may still be alive, who have been in their employ, uh, files which may actually show the extent to which some of the officers who may have been involved in the death um, of uh, Neil Agat actually continued with uh, the wrongdoing that they were involved in back in the 80s and uh, in uh, years uh, before. But of course, everybody confident that today is only a start. These proceedings, as you know, are scheduled to go on for about five weeks. And in that period, everyone, uh, uh, Neil Agat's family, Neil Agat's comrades, as well as friends, hope that uh, they will indeed yield some, uh, something. But of course, that uh, will depend a great deal on people coming forward, the state cooperating, but also those who may have been in similar circumstances also coming forward to share whatever it is that, mean, that they know that will help uh, this uh, um, uh, process to actually achieve or uh, what it is intended to, to achieve. And, and we know at this point that the journey to getting closure or the family getting closure is a five-week long journey as the inquiry is said to at least take place on a span of five weeks. But today it is day one, as you've mentioned. And do we know at this stage uh, whether or not uh, the High Court has taken a break or whether they will commence, uh, you know, today with the rest of the testimonies? 
No, indeed, they, uh, we, we, uh, the proceedings uh, will continue after uh, the lunch break. But, of course, maybe something I need to mention at uh, this stage. There is also that, there's, remember, there's been that whole big lingering um, issue of why it has taken so long for the state, the government, successive administrations to actually embrace this particular um, process. I was speaking earlier to one of the former commissioners um, of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It was it's one of the big mysteries. And I remember also in the conversation I had with um, uh, Reverend Frank Chikana yesterday, who was, of course, a fellow detainee with uh, Neil Agat, who was also tortured and poisoned. And he was talking about this mystery, how uh, his own comrades were reluctant to actually embrace this process, the result of which is the situation that this inquest is finding itself in now, which is that uh, a lot of people are deceased, uh, memories may have uh, faded, and uh, a lot of records have actually uh, gone missing. And I think that is something that is, else, that is really uh, uh, going to um, uh, make or break um, this, uh, this, this inquest. Which right. Hopefully, uh, some people will come to the fore and indeed uh, make sure that that isn't the case going forward. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. William Vogel.